Diaphone here. What is up, boys? Hey YouTube, this is Diaphone. Today I want to talk about bad fighting game advice. So as I've been playing fighting games for a while, I've received some pretty crappy advice over the years. And um, there's a tweet very recently that I think other people are starting to feel similar. You see this tweet has a lot of engagement. Basically FTC dudes are the worst at giving advice. You know, take your turn back, but don't hit buttons. Take the throw, but don't get thrown. Keep moving, but slow down. Learn frame advantage, but don't respect frame advantage. So a lot of like conflicting advice, right? And I kind of agree with this, oddly enough. People have talked about this a while. Teaching is very hard. Giving advice is pretty hard, especially tailored advice. I'll dig into this comment a little bit more, but it actually reminded me a lot of a YouTube comment I got really recently on one of, my, uh, one of my videos. This guy goes into looking for advice on how to prevent mashing. So once I decided to look on the forum specifically about the issue of panic mashing and how to calm yourself down and ways one might prevent it. And why I did get a couple decent responses, I actually got far more people coming to the thread and posting mood advice and talking to me as if I'd never played a fighting game before. <laughs> Some of these responses were just calm down, practice an hour every day, or my favorite anti air jumps. Lots of parroting advice. I'm sure they all heard many times before and believe this is probably the answer to everything when the thread was opening a dialogue to a more specific issue. I think lots of people want to help, but they're quite bad at it, especially in this video, teaching is a skill. Yeah. So look at this in a vacuum, right? The response is like, just calm down, practice an hour every day or anti or jumps. Those are actually like, if you don't know what the subject matter is, those are like, <laughs> those could be appropriate responses. It's the same thing like this. All of these are valid statements, right? Take your turn back or don't hurt buttons. It all depends on the context of the situation, right? If there's someone that mashes a lot, I would tell them don't hit buttons, right? If there's someone that just blocks constantly and never takes their turn, I would tell them, take your turn back. And it's kind of hard. I actually get questions like this a lot on stream and they're very like vague questions. There's stuff like, hey, Diaphone, I'm on floor nine. How do I get better? <laughs> You know how hard it is to answer a question like that? I mean, I could say generic advice just like this, right? Take your turn back or learn frame data. And there's a good chance it could be right. A lot of times when people are like giving fighting game advice, they're just kind of like making assumptions. I'm making an assumption as a floor nine player that you don't know frame data. You know, do most floor nine players know frame data? Probably not, right? But you know, that guy might know frame data. It's, it's hard. It's really hard to tell what the appropriate advice is to give someone. So I think the first issue here is if I is really conditional for me to get better or for anyone to get better it's a personalized answer of what their strengths and weaknesses are another common question i get is like how do i beat eno right or how do i beat athena and i can only guess at what the issue is right uh, a couple of like common strategies to beat you know we'll actually go into training mode for this yes exactly head that's a spoiler that's a spoiler huh are you saying that the flip side of getting bad advice is asking bad question yes that is 100 percent what i'm getting at but you're spoiling it if someone asks me how to be Eno, and I don't really want to like spend time on the answer, because I could I could literally write like an hour long guide on how to be Eno. And the information is out there, you know, Sonic Saw has a really good video on how to be Eno, it covers a lot of this stuff. You know, I used to give really generic answers. Like most people, what do they not do well against Eno? Well, this move is punishable on block. A lot of people don't punish it. This move, you can grab. A lot of people don't grab it on reaction. A lot of people don't FD against Eno. So something like that, like if they're FDing, then it's less of a mix up, right? People also don't backdash against Eno. So people should backdash more and make her commit to different options. So it's, I would usually give stuff like that. But if someone, if some random person is just asking me, how do I beat Eno? They might know all that, right? There's also stuff like just back, like backdash more. Maybe they're already backdashing a ton. If I tell them to backdash even more, that's not going to be useful to them. So what I'm trying to get at is that's a really bad question, right? Let's say I play like a first to 10 against you. Then I could tell you what you're doing wrong. But if you ask some random person, like a random Discord channel, how do I beat Eno? You're going to get a bunch of different responses that aren't that useful. And so what I do now is I'll ask him, what gives you trouble about Eno? Okay, is it the mix up? Is it the neutral? It's part of, I think, being a good teacher. You have to like narrow down what they're actually looking for because they're not looking for an hour long guide on how to be Eno. They're not gonna absorb all that information. And most people are just gonna give a couple tips anyway. So you wanna make sure those tips are, are useful, right? But if you're on the asking end, you wanna ask a very specific question. Ideally, someone's like looking at your replays or it's after you fought someone. It could be really tough to get pointed advice if they don't know enough about you or your situation. And I kinda wanna labor into that topic about how you can give tons of advice and it might not necessarily be useful. 
This is a, again, a diaphone exclusive. My first ever unscripted guide is not actually on my YouTube channel. It's uh, I made a Blake guide. Chat, if you could guess how long this Blake guide is. My typical uh, length for a guide is like 30 minutes for unscripted, about 10 minutes scripted guide. Three days, come on, bro, Axis. Looks like we're pointing around that hour. Three hours and 47 minutes. It's ridiculous, bro. I spent almost an hour covering her normals. Do you guys think this is useful to people? Yes, probably, but it's way more information that people need to know. And honestly, okay, how you have so much to talk about? I could legitimately made a 10 hour guide on Blake. There was a lot of stuff that got cut out. I actually started to get tired in the middle of a guide. <laughs> The point I'm trying to get at is that there's so much information that you could give to someone. And if someone's looking for a Blake guide, for example, or any type of guide, there's information you can distill from this that would give the most of them impact. And after that, you get like diminishing returns. And it's the same thing about when you ask people. The third part of FGC advice I want to talk about is, let's say you play a set against someone and then you ask them for advice afterwards. I actually played Zombu, who's um, one of the best Grand Blue versus, if not the best Grand Blue versus player in America right now. Okay, so yeah, I was playing Zombu and after the set, I asked for some advice and he actually gave me some specific advice on like, after this move, you're only minus one, so you need to like choose your options differently. I thought it was a different frame that and like a really strong player can notice different stuff that you could potentially be doing. but. I I found it really interesting that like once I started labbing out the matchup, the thing that I think would have helped me out the most, he didn't even talk about, which was this move right here. I saw this flash and I was like, oh shit, I gotta jump away. And I just gave up the full screen space and she, he just run after me. But it turns out all you have to do is just, you can walk past it and you can save screen space and you know punish them for moving forward. When you're playing someone, it's hard to notice everything that they're doing wrong, right? You're trying to focus on your own gameplay and what you can be doing better. And so there honestly, there is some stuff you're gonna have to lab out. But yeah, so even a very strong player like that is not gonna be able to point out everything because there's things that they think are important and they think they should share. And then I have different priorities and things that I think are important, right? Even after a set, it can be very tough to pinpoint the right advice to give to someone. So honestly, if I were to ask Zombo, hey Zombo, what do I do after this EX move that Vera does? He probably would have told me, right? Because, you know, now his mind's focused on it. But because I didn't say that, you know, I had to figure out something myself. Okay, that's fair. So what I'm trying to say is people aren't get, aren't the best at giving advice, right? One, because when they're playing, they're kind of focused on themselves and it's also kind of hard to give advice. It's hard to teach, right? Answers are also really individualized. So when you see a response like this, take your turn back, don't hit buttons. Those are all very valid points, but it depends on the context, right? There's nuance here and there's also individualized answers, right? Because don't hit buttons and take your turn back are counterproductive. So I could also imagine this person or whoever this guy's talking about. I tell this person, take your turn back. He goes from taking his turn back 20% of the time to taking his turn back 100% of the time and then he gets disrespected and he's like well this isn't working and then someone else tells him don't hit buttons and then he brings it back down to never hitting buttons again right there's no absolutes in fighting games you have to take everything in context and everything is like a non-absolute also keep in mind fighting games are not solved which means that the advice someone will give is not necessarily true and it might you know when people find out more tech or people just might have a skewed view of the game so you have to like take every piece of advice you get with a grain of salt and make sure you ask better questions generally more specific the better and if you're not sure what to ask focus on what you think is most important the other thing i'd say is trust your instinct no one gives 100 percent right advice try to keep an open mind and assume that the advice is right but also test it out yourself and keep it with a grain of salt all right so guys questions does that make sense most important part of advice is providing context to your suggestions exactly and if you don't get context please ask for context right because some people again they're not teachers yeah, Meru, it's hard to explain a lot of stuff because it depends on the other player reactions option they choose. It. Like, for example, some people may end up boxing in plus frames and new new attack to frame trap, but after the third time, the person may go for a big move, be more plus. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's hard to give that kind of advice. The fact that there's a lot more nuance than you you do this in this situation, that's like never the right answer in fighting games, right? There's always like, you need to do this layer one option and layer two is this, layer three is this, layer four is this. Uh, and that's really hard to explain when you're giving advice. That's something that like, takes a lot of understanding and you know it could be a new player and if i start talking about layer one layer two layer three shit the new player is going to be like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> yeah if then style advice is is 100 true but doing if then style advice is really hard right if you get too far into the if then style you get into a three hour and 30 minute blake video there's some bad teachers and bad students yes i think i think the problem is on both sides of my cap
so yeah if you guys like that style of video let me know that in the comments below I'm trying to make more helpful guys like this and you know try to level up everyone's game and try to you know have people enjoy fighting games more so if that's a mission that resonates with you consider like sharing and subscribing also if you have some additional advice or additional questions leave it down in the comments below i read every comment and i'm really curious to see what you guys think as always thanks so much for watching guys have a great day and i'll see you next time